Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking with Famous People. I'm your host, Eric, and today we feature part two of our interview with famous person Matthew Cates. Talking, talking with famous people. Talking with famous people is a great name, but I can't help but suggest the one that came to me, and I don't think you should use my suggestion, but I have to voice it anyway, is uh-huh. Rapping with Eric. <laughs> That's a great idea. But I feel like having the title of your interview show be a joke is a bad move. But talking with famous people isn't really a joke. It's, it's, it's supposed to be making a philosophical point. The distinction between jokes and philosophizing, that I'm not seeing it. Well, I can't one philosophize in a humorous fashion? Yeah, but it's still a joke. Why does that diminish its its impact or, or importance? Its impact and its importance are they're undiminished. But we're talking about titles for things. Don't make your title a joke. <laughs> Well, look, it's not supposed to be a serious thing, t- though. Don't make your title ironic. Well, Rapping with Eric is a great name, but you have to rapping understand the reference. Eric, it's good. It assumes that everybody knows I'm Rapping Eric. Yeah. That's- yeah. I guess they're both equally flawed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't accept your critique of my name. I reject your critique. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I don't care. And I don't care uh, because I don't want it to be important anyway. Yeah, that's why I'm changing the subject. I want to know about your your reasons thing. How you said last time you don't you're not interested in providing reasons or justifications. Oh, okay. Um, that's a good question. Ask it. Okay. Well, can you tell me why aren't you? Why would you not be interested in providing reasons? Which is the whole greatest joy of life is providing reasons for things. Well, the second thing you said, <laughs> um, no. Um, why? Why wouldn't I be interested in providing reasons for things? Yeah, I read a book a long time ago called The Dilbert Principle by Scott Adams, the guy who makes that Dilbert cartoon. He took a class on hypnosis, and. You know, with hypnosis, you can get people to do a thing. And so, like, every time I snap my own finger, I have to rip up the card. The reason I'm doing that is because I was hypnotized to make that connection. Like, if A, then B. If I was asked, why are you ripping up the paper, I would come up with some weird reason. The actual true reason has nothing to do with, like, I'm ripping up this paper because I hate this paper. You know, I'm not ripping it up because I hate it. I'm ripping it up because some process conditioned me to do it every time a snap happens. But you seem to be I'd ignoring see. You seem to be ignoring that you also have the capacity to evaluate critically your own reasons. Ignoring the fact... Say that again. Ignoring the fact that I have the capacity to... Critically evaluate it. your own reasons. Yes, that's exactly my point. I'm ignoring that. Because sometimes it's more important to recognize that you have an opinion or a feeling than why you have it. Do you normally have difficulty recognizing when you have feelings? Not to an extreme amount. I think I think I probably have as much difficulty recognizing my feelings as any as an, as as most people. Then why would the recognition of it be more important than the understanding of it? Ooh, good question. Maybe not enough people recognize their feelings, or it's I, I, I per- personally I had a, a hard time recognizing feelings for a long time, more so than I had understanding them. I had like two emotions that I understood really with excitement or joy and doing something fun and being mad or resentful. You know, I think maybe I still have a limited palette. Maybe that's where I'm at. It'll, be, it'll either be Eric made something up um, <laughs> and need to worry about it or Eric didn't make something up and you should find out what that is.
Well, it turns out I sort of made something up. What I was drawing the distinction between was A-S-C-E-T-I-C, -E ascetic, meaning like minimalist spiritual guy lives in a cave with his holy textures or whatever. <laughs> Texts, I mean, <laughs> holy textures, like soft and rough. <laughs> So A-E, aesthetic. Right, right. You know, one of the things that I claim to have learned from you, and I may have made up on my own from just at the same time that I was hanging out with, with you a lot, is when I see a piece of art, almost immediately and intuitively, this is good, or this is not good. And there's shading in between, but the more you tune into that feeling, the more that the shading is evident to you. But it, there, it's something that you can't really reason about. You can't say why in particular because with a piece of art there's so many complexities that go into your experience of it to to hone in on to any one reason is to miss the point. This concludes episode six of Talking with Famous People. There will be a part three. Thanks for listening. Talking, talking with famous people